In Troy, New York, police and city officials have closed ranks amidst community accusations that the beatings at the Coca Pelle nightclub were racially motivated. The residents claim this is just the most recent example of a long-term pattern of racially motivated brutality in Troy. Which is worse? What the police did? Or how they've responded? Instead of correcting patterns of police brutality, they lash out at community leaders. Mr. Willie Baycoat, are you present? Mr. Baycoat, here we have a man that for the first, for the past 18 months has repeatedly alleged that people of color, many of who are in his congregation, have been mistreated at the hands of Troy police officers. In November 2012, Mr. Baycoat held meetings to broadcast these alleged atrocities. So the fella starts walking backward, mm -hmm, and next thing you know, Officer Schoolmaker tased him, and down he went. And they were on that fella like monkeys from a tree. They got on him, they were beating him. One fella, one cop, his, all you could see was the elbow up and down, up and down. When that fella got up, that officer, I guess this is why the way they're the black gloves now, he was doing this with his hand because he had punched that man so many times he hurt himself. Last week, Mr. Baycoat stated that he, quote, is tired of mothers bringing their children to him beaten by Troy police officers. He then went on to proclaim that he will no longer tolerate this abuse and he will hold city officials accountable. October 16th, I witnessed four men coming from Hudson Valley again, this time a student. This was close to 9 o'clock at night coming down Spring Ave. I see four men, I see one police car, and I say, hmm, no problem. And before I could get to Congress, seven police cars shot by me heading toward Adam Street, where I had just passed, where there were four black men and a police officer, and the black men were sitting down, there was no ruckus. And I said to myself immediately, no, I don't believe that, that they're going there. Don't tell me, I'm talking to myself, of course, at the time. I said, no, let me go see this. I turned around and went back. You see, because somebody's got to be willing to stand up and look and see. Because, you see, one of the things that does happen in Troy, by the way, the police will force you to go into your house when they are brutalizing people in the street. They will make you get off of your porch. They will make you get out of your windows. They will, they will corral the person who is being beaten so that you can't see it or testify to the unnecessary brutality. So with that said, there I get back, and what do you know? Ten police cars for four jake walkers, one is being brutalized because he had a cell phone in his hand talking to his father in Virginia. They were all four college students that had just gotten off of the bus. As a result of that, three of them have left the city of Troy because Troy is too hostile for them. And they didn't, the mother of one of the victims stated to me, I didn't know that you people were like that up there. Mr. Baycoat speaks of the need for officer accountability, community policing, and working together. However, his idea of working together is publicly inviting police officers prying to an investigation into their actions. That's not my idea of working together. We must teach our children that no matter what, we are human beings and not animals. And we must at all times, under the heavy arms of hate, we must never go backwards and desecrate the memories and struggles of those we celebrate this month. Amen. Our own people in our communities are paying too heavy of a price. His concept of working together is confined to seizing upon only those moments that garner media attention for his own self-aggrandizement. Quite frankly, Mr. Baycoat, if the media isn't present, neither is he. I'm not going anywhere. And I will not allow you to continue to subject people of color in Troy to the constant threat of racial profiling, unwarranted beatings, false arrests, and dysfunctional justice system. Let me be perfectly clear. The actions by members of the Troy police in response to Coca Pelli's club were not motivated by race. We are not here today because of race or the use of force by the Troy Police Department. To Willie Bacote, my comments are not going to be flattering in any way, shape, or form. 
Please respect the fact that I do have an opinion. I understand that he is near and dear to some people's hearts. They need to be said, I'd rather have said this publicly face to face to him. But I refuse to hide behind a Facebook page or to any anonymous blogger. I'd love to see you stand next to me and listen to what I have to say tonight. Your interaction with the children of this city is second to none. I believe you have outshined all other pastors in serving a specific community need. Your Feed the Kid program, your Gun Buyback program, your Clean the Block program, and the Kid Day in April Fest are all fine examples of your work. You are proud of your accomplishments, and you should be. Will you pledge to hold officers accountable to establish procedures of policing and to the laws the rest of us must follow? Will you remove negligent and ineffective leaders from the office when they put our community in harm's way? We need to come to the table together, work together, and reach solutions together, and we need to stop making excuses for failure. We have much work to do, and it starts with a real heartfelt commitment to ensure this never happens again in our town. I thank you for inviting us to present to you in this larger venue and for being open to hearing experiences and suggestions of more participants than usual. God bless you. Really, you are a divider right now in your community. Your comments on Facebook and at the rally and at the meeting last week are the other side of you. Help us make sure that we send this message throughout the city of Troy that we have had enough of all of the nonsense that seems to exist in this city, the disparity in all that exists in the right in the right here in the city of Troy. Like the video there, there's another side. Recent comments on Facebook, but are not limited to. We are at the threshold of celebrating another month of black history. Let us not tarnish their memories with the hate or violence, but march in peace for justice and righteousness. Let us show the world that we are better than our enemy. I demand you tell the people sitting here tonight who your enemy is. I wish he was here to explain that. Your statement clearly makes you a divider of the people. This is not my first time speaking before this city council about problems with policing in our community. And I fear what might happen is we as a people and a community do not beat our swords into plowsheds and come boldly to the table of dialogue and deal openly with the issue of race. Not only will we fail the city, but we will also fail ourselves. Please stop denying that there are abuses. I understand. There are abuses. That isn't the issue. The problem is you're denying it. If you would simply do something about it. Okay, sis, we know there are criminals. <laughs> but the police are not judge, jury, executioner. They need to stop having a public trial on the streets and brutalizing people, arrest, and take them into custody and let the system do what it's supposed to do. If you do that, you will have a people, all of Troy will support you, Chief, if you will just let the law do what it's meant to do for all people and not some. Thank you much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.